Hello, my dear students, and welcome to my new series of screencasts about RSpec. If you have ever developed a large and complex app, you know that testing all the cases manually becomes a huge pain. This leads to a situation when you are reluctant to add new features or refactor the code, because you think that some existing functionality might break. And when something actually does break, you spend a lot of time finding the cause. At the end of the day, this means losing money, because, well, you know that proverb, time is money. So that's why automated testing and test-driven development process has emerged. The very basic idea behind test-driven development, or TDD, is writing test cases and then crafting the code that makes the test pass. Then you observe the result refactor the code as necessary and repeat the process. There are lots of various tools to write automated tests, but as long as we are talking about Ruby, I wanted to introduce you RSpec that was created in 2005 by Stephen Baker and during the past years has become really popular. RSpec is maintained by a small team and has a great community behind it. RSpec implements behavior-driven development, or just BDD. BDD has emerged from test-driven development and, as the name implies, it revolves around behavior. Because at the end of the day, having a database storing something or an API responding with some JSON to a request are all examples of behavior. And RSpec helps us to describe this behavior by writing tests or specs, as developers call them. Today we are going to create a new Rails application and integrate RSpec into it. So go ahead and create a new Rails app. Note the T flag. It means that we don't want to use the default testing suite for our app, as we are going to stick with RSpec. OK, so now open up your gem file and add RSpec Rails gem to both development and test environments. And run a uh, bundle install. After it, you can run a special code generator uh, that is going to do some basic setup. You will notice uh, that three files were created. .rspec uh, hosts all of the global options uh, that will be used when running tests. Color, of course, means uh, that uh, the output will be colored. Please note uh, that if you are on Windows, uh, the default CMD does not support colored output, so I recommend uh, sticking to ConM or something like that. A require RSpec helper means uh, that uh, this file will be required for all test cases automatically. Uh, this is convenient, because uh, this file contains some global settings. Let's have a look at it now. Navigate to a new spec directory and uh, then open specHelper.rb. As you see, uh, this file has really detailed comments uh, that is cool and convenient. Note uh, the following comments saying uh, that uh, this file should be as lightweight as possible, because it is being loaded every time. For now, I'd recommend leaving uh, those settings to their default values and refer to the suggested settings below. There are commented out. For example, you can use uh, these two settings in conjunction to limit running tests to individual examples. Uh, that may be useful sometimes. Disable monkey patching is recommended, but I won't do this, because uh, then you will have some issues with your feature specs. Leave uh, these settings be for now. Setting warnings to true is probably going to generate a lot of noise from various gems uh, that you are using in your projects, so enable uh, this only if really needed. Profile examples is a great setting to detect slow running tests, so you may want to enable it if your test suite is taking a long time to run. I would also recommend using order option to run test cases in random order. Also, you can use kernel.srand. This way you can pass a seed option with a number to reproduce the exact test failure when using a randomization. 
OK, now you can also open railshelper.rb file and note that this file is not required by default anywhere and you should load it only for test cases that are related to Rails specific stuff. Now let's equip our application with some more gems. First of all, database cleaner uh, that stores various strategies for cleaning test database after running specs. It is really recommended to keep your database clean between tests, so uh, that uh, they are independent and do not rely on each other. So as you see, uh, this gem supports various ORMs, so you don't have to stick with active record. OK, just uh, navigate to your gem file, uh, create a new group for testing and add uh, this gem here. Now open your command line interface, run bundle install and after it navigate to Rails helper and require this file here. Do not require it inside a spec helper, by the way. Now scroll down and uh, set uh, use transactional fixtures to false. Because we are going to have various test cases and for specs uh, that are working with JavaScript, truncation is uh, the preferred strategy. And now paste uh, the following code. So, as you see, before each suit, uh, the database is being cleaned with truncation. Next, before each spec, we are using truncation for JavaScript tests and transaction otherwise. And then after each spec, some cleaning is actually performed. More configuration examples are available at database cleaners GitHub page. To write feature specs, we will also require capybar. To put it shortly, capybar helps us simulate how the real user interacts with our app. He visits various pages, submits forms, clicks on navigational elements and so on. Capybar has a great intuitive API and using it is really easy. Ok, so navigate it to your gem file and add a new gem here. And now run bundle install and after that just require Capybar inside your Rails helper. Just like uh, this. OK. Lastly, I would also like to tweak global configuration options a bit, making our spec output more verbose. Simply set format flag to doc inside our spec file. Great. Now let's write our first test case. As long as uh, this is a musical shop, I want album model to be present. And also let's say uh, that uh, the title has to be set for each album. I'm running uh, the call generator and just notice what happens. Not only uh, the models file is created, albumspec.rb was created for us as well. Cool. Now we can just apply uh, the migration and open our newly created albumspec.rb. OK, so notice uh, that a Rails helper is required here, because we are testing Rails specific functionality and, uh, well, uh, the type model is not actually needed here, uh, because our spec treats any tests inside models directory as models anyways. Well, at least if you set infer spec type from file location inside Rails helper.rb. Uh, the next slide is our spec describe album and here we are saying uh, that uh, the specs inside are related to the album class. So we are basically describing uh, the behavior of that class. Sometimes you may notice uh, that uh, the describe method is used without our spec and uh, this will work as well. However, that's not recommended, because uh, this way you are polluting global namespace. And uh, therefore, uh, the top-level describe method call should be scoped to our spec. And pending uh, will notify uh, that uh, this suit is not just yet implemented. Let's try running the tests by calling our spec dot. Dot means uh, that we want to run all tests inside uh, the spec directory. OK, so if you are seeing error messages like this one, this means that your test database is not yet prepared, so you have to apply migrations to it by running regdb migrate with Rails environment set to test. 
Uh, when you are done, you can, ru can run your R spec again. And now you are going to see uh, this blue message uh, saying that specs are not yet implemented. Okay, so let's add a test, checking that an album should not be valid without a title. I'm going to write it instead of um, the spending method. The it method creates an example, and it may accept a description explaining what this example is about. And next, inside the block, we are going to put the actual code. First of all, we initialize a new instance of the album class, and now some RSpec domain-specific language. Just look how cool it is. I'm setting an expectation here, powered by RSpec expectations. Prior to expectations, RSpec used should matches, and they are still supported but deprecated. Be valid is a built-in measure that simply checks if the record is valid or not. So this expectation passes only if the record is not valid. So I'm running my RSpec once again and of course it fails with a red error message because we don't have any validation set up. Note that RSpec even shows which object was used to check it against matcher. So now it's high time to turn uh, this red error message into a green success message and actually uh, developers call uh, this cycle a red-green refactor, meaning uh, that firstly we write tests, uh, then uh, the code to make them run successfully and then refactor the code if necessary, just as I explained in the beginning of this video. So after defining a new validation rule, I run RSpec once again and, as you see, message has turned to green. It's really great and notice how readable the output is thanks to the doc formatter. Let's add a couple more examples saying that the album's title should be no longer than 100 symbols and if both conditions are met, the album is valid. So, at uh, this point, of course, uh, the test fails, uh, because uh, we don't have uh, validation present, but also notice uh, that we do have some duplication. We instantiate album in both tests, and I'd love to extract uh, this portion of code somewhere. And uh, the first solution is to actually use a let. We pass a name and implementation to the let method inside a block. And then when we uh, reference album, let method creates it for us. Ok, but uh, we can be even more expressive in this case. After all, uh, the main star in these examples is album, so we can mark it as a test subject. And apparently uh, there can be only one test subject, uh, but I think it is even more expressive and better in this case. Ok, so now we can add yet another validation rule to make our test pass and after that I am going to create yet another uh, test case to check uh, that uh, the record is valid with all proper data. Ok, so now our test suite passes and looking at uh, those green messages is really soothing because green lies in the middle of visible light specter and moreover lush forests and fields are green, meaning there is a lot of food here, we inherited uh, this instinct from our ancestors. <laughs> but anyways, to wrap this episode, let's write our feature test with the help of Capybara. Create a new features uh, slash albums directory inside spec and then inside index spec.rb file. So inside uh, this file we are going to firstly require our Rails helper. And after that I am going to type our spec, uh, then feature and then albums list, and then pass a block. Feature is an alias to write in our spec describe and uh, then type feature. And well, you can use uh, both of uh, those constructs, but I think that feature is more concise. Inside I'm going to type scenario and uh, then authenticated user. 
Scenario is an alias for the it method. You are free to use any of them, but for feature tests it seems more natural to use this kind of naming that came from a language called Gherkin. Ok, now inside the scenario I am going to explain what authenticated user should see when visiting a page containing a list of albums. So, for now we will simply check that he sees page's title. So, I am going to navigate to the albums page using visit method provided by Capybara. And next we want to check that inside the contents block there is a H1 header containing the albums text. For this I will use find method and provide CSS selector to find the required node. After that uh, let's use have content module and provide um, albums uh, string to it. By the way, you can also use XPath instead of CSS uh, for the finder. Just use uh, XPath symbol uh, before providing the actual selector. And also you can uh, scope our finder using within method, just like this. So I'm going to provide content here and uh, then uh, delete content from uh, the find method. Ok, so now we need to define a new route, new controller and a new view. So let's create our new controller re really quick. I'm going to call this just albums controller. It is going to have only index method for now. Uh, next let's create our view called index.html.erb and inside we are going to place our h1 header. Also I am going to add a child set for my uh, page and set it to utf8 and my yield block is going to be wrapped with content uh, div. Ok, and lastly I want to uh, provide a new route for my album's resources. Just like this. So I'm going to say that we have only the index action and my root is set to albums index. Now I am opening my command line tool and I am saying rspec and provide path to my file containing my uh, feature test. Ok, after uh, my test suite is run we see that everything is working correctly. Just to make sure you can change uh, albums to some other value and check uh, that your test fails. Brilliant. So well, in this video we've introduced RSpec and integrated it into our app. We've also taken advantage of database cleaner and capybara as well as written our first specs. In the upcoming episodes I will explain you how to test various parts of your app using RSpec and supporting libraries. Don't hesitate to contact me if you have any questions and by the way, thank you for all the feedback that you are sending me so far guys. So thanks for staying with me and see you soon.